Hi everybody, welcome to Cuisine with Eileen, me, Eileen J.D. Corpuses, my editor column and all things related to food and culture. This is my first hand at vlogging, so without further ado, I hope you enjoy the video I made. Today's video is from a local Vietnamese Lunar New Year festival called the UVSA Tet Fest, and it was originally organized by the United Vietnamese Student Alliance, aka UVSA. Tet Fest is held in Orange County at the OC Fair and Event Center, and tickets are $8, which are purchased at the main gate. So, you can't really purchase it ahead of time. Tet Fest went from January 27th to January 29th. Festival activities include a fall eating contest, lion dancing, and plenty of food and merchandise from small businesses. I went to the 41st annual Tet, Tet Fest, and I went to two out of the three days, Saturday and Sunday, so January 28th and 29th. I went last year during early February, and the reason why there's a variation in the dates is because uh, Tet Fest, in, aka Vietnamese Lunar New Year, is celebrated in the first month of the Lunar New Year, which can be anywhere between January 21st and February 20th. On Saturday, as soon as we paid for the $12 parking, my family and I were greeted with a long line to the entrance, but the line did not last long. There was a ceremonial special on Saturday, and I think this is happening for every single Saturday of the festival. Uh, from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m., where festival goers were invited to wear traditional Vietnamese clothing called Ao Dai. Uh, or they could wear military and scout uniforms, not including costumes, for a free ticket. Uh, water bottles and bags were welcome, so we had our bags checked at the entrance. I do know for some events that that's not allowed, but luckily Tech Fest allowed it. As soon as we went past the bag check, we were greeted with a large gate that had Vietnamese writing on two red banners, and there's the OC promenade. Um, the entrance. Last year, because it was the year of the tiger, there was a tiger, but obviously, but this year there's a happy kitty. The company sponsoring this statue is Lexor, a beauty supply company from Westminster, California, so super local. Another sponsor for the UVSA Tet Fest is Wells Fargo, and there were two uh, like lucky trees with uh, lucky red envelopes, which are usually uh, handed out during uh, Chinese or Vietnamese Lunar New Year. So as soon as you enter, we there was a cute little lantern entrance, super photogenic. Um, when you enter the festival, there's food to the left and more food to the right, and vendors and more in the middle. So if you saw the, if you remember the map from the beginning, there in the middle you can go through the contest stage and also the cultural village. So there's the food, bunch of cool places, a popular free refills drink. U.S. Marines, and then a bunch of uh, local vendors they could, uh, and plus sponsors they could purchase from. It was really busy when we went, and that was the Saturday, uh, because Saturday was the last sunny day, and then on Sunday it was super cloudy, so there was a lot of people there for the Saturday. Another free unlimited refills, big baby bottle, that was popular. On the other side of the festival, there was also a free unlimited refills place, but instead of baby bottles, it was animal-shaped containers. Excuse me, animal shaped bottles. There was a little stage where they were hosting um, like the court for uh, like Miss Vietnam. And yeah, they, they had performances. Here's the contest stage. So around the contest stage, there were games from student organizations from different schools. Like as you can see, Vietnamese student associations. There's one from USC. I don't remember the other schools that were there, but panning over to the contest stage, when I went there, there was a boba contest happening. A boba drinking contest where they had to drink three um, cups of milk tea, not boba. And then you could also enter yourself into the foe eating contest. And there was also a Super Smash Bros contest, and you would have to pay a small fee for that, but uh, anyone could sign up. The boba drinkers in all their glory getting ready for the contest. And it was really fun to watch. And then they also had an Audai festival. Okay, now to the highlight, uh, Cultural Village. So it's a replica of Saigon, AKA it's called Mini Saigon. In the, the background, you can see all the rides, the festival rides that you could, like at a normal carnival. Um, there were also guards that were standing at either one of the gates. They could come at either time. I think there was a group of blue dress guards and then green and at any moment they could like and like drop down their like swords at you here 
This is the cultural village. There was a stage where there were performances like singing and dancing. There's the fair rides again, an area where you can make free survival bracelets and good luck knots. There's also replica mini Saigon, a little stage right there. And then, yeah, back to the OC Promenade hangar right there. So it's, everything was super close and more photo opportunities for you to go to. Inside the cultural village, there was a bonsai tree exhibit. So a bunch of bonsai trees were there. They were all very beautiful. And there was also a wishing tree where, uh, for free, you could just get a piece of paper, write down what you wish for for the new year, and just tie it on. Every single year, you can see this wishing tree. And make sure to tie your wish really tight. You don't want it to fall off the tree and then fall into the ground. It's nice to see everyone's wishes and what they hope for in the new year. There's also a little altar, which is one of the traditions of, uh, of normal Vietnamese learner New Year. Uh, to the side was a free DIY survival bracelet or good luck charm. I made the good luck uh, survival bracelet. Here are three students, Redlands East Valley students, going from right to left. There's Emily Stannon, senior at Redlands East Valley High School, Kayla Vu, uh, uh, junior from Redlands East Valley High School, and Deborah Toma. Uh, another senior from Merlin's East Valley High School, and they were all making survival bracelets. And then here's my friends and I. We also had Audrey Stannon, Emily Stannon's sister, and she was the one out of all five of us to make the good luck knot where you could hang it around your neck. In the cultural village, there was plenty of stalls for about more info about like Vietnamese history and more activities for kids to do. We were lucky enough on Sunday to see two Vietnamese weddings happening. You can see there, under the umbrellas are the bride and the groom. Just caught one. But yeah, that was super cool. And then one of the highlights, another one of the highlights of Tet Fest are the dancing dragons, which are performed every single year. And uh, you can donate money to UVSA and Tet Fest by uh, literally getting money into your hand and then f quote unquote feeding it to the dragons. It's adorable. Obviously, there's people inside the suits. And they grab the money for the dragons bowing and thanks. So cute. The, to the most important part. There's a variety of food, Japanese, corn dogs, Vietnamese food, obviously. I'm glad there was a lot more Vietnamese food this year than there was last year. Um, there was balut, cane juice, balut being uh, fetus chicken, cheese wheel pasta, there was even sushi. It was crazy. There was so many, so much good food to eat there. Here's a highlight of more of the Vietnamese food that they had on the right side of the festival. Uh, so I guess they were called food courts. And there were two food courts. Last year when I went on the last day of Tet Fest, there was only one food court to the left side as soon as you entered. But now there are two food courts. Food court F and, yeah, they're both food courts F. So the bubble waffles are real good. You can see the honey cones, the J cones from back there a bit. All you, another all you can drink. That was good, lemonade and iced tea. There's takoyaki from one of the stands. It was delicious. Hot. Make sure you blow on that before you start biting. You don't want to burn your tongue or your mouth. So here's the Vietnamese food place that my family and I decided to eat at on our first day there on Saturday. I didn't know what we were eating, but one of the other festival goers suggested we take a bite at it, so we gladly did. Here's some more footage of them making what we were gonna eat. I don't know what it was called, but it was like, here, here it is, shrimp, a pickled vegetables, salad, like a fish sauce with more, and then, oh, the barbecue. The barbecue was to die for. Barbecue was like $15 for three sticks, and then I had it again with my friends on Sunday. Um, the corn, oh my goodness, I can't stop talking about this corn. I really, really, really like corn. But this corn, it was like, it had scallions, and then it was salty, and there was this sauce they put in it. I don't, I don't even know, it was just so delicious. That was like three for 15 as well, same price. The Hawaiian honey cone. So when my family and I went to Tefest last year when we first tried this, I don't know if it was $20, but when we bought it, it was $20. That's my sister. And then here, again on Sunday, we bought another honey cone. There it is, with Audrey Stannon, Rev Senior. So another one of the Vietnamese dolls 
Christmas here, my family and I decided to grab some dessert. We grabbed, here you can see them making the pandan roll cake. So pandan is a kind of, uh, it's like, it looks like aloe vera. People extract it for their flavor. Green, usually. As you can see, the pandan roll cake was green. They put coconut on top of it. Something like peanuts inside as well. You can see them also making other things at their stall. Here was like uh, a porridge with like fried bananas, peanuts, and corn. That was yummy. Oh, another one of the stalls, um, we had garlic lobster pasta without the lobster, just uh, noodles and garlic and parmesan. And then we got a potato hut on Sunday. We went ahead and bought a potato swirl with garlic, practically like chips. It was delicious. Here we went over to the balut place, and balut is basically fetus chicken or duck, and it's like kind of eating egg and chicken at the same time. That was my first time ever like actually eating it, and I really enjoyed it. You gotta make sure you eat the soup first. And it was nice and hot, and the little like vegetables that were with it really refreshed my mouth afterwards. And then here is a bubble waffle you can get from Waffle World, which was right next door to J Cone place. And we had matcha ice cream with bubble waffle, Oreo, strawberries, and like um, chocolate sticks. And then Ghost Sticks is a corn dog shop. Uh, my family and I also got Ghost Sticks last year. I think the best one is the one with the potatoes. There is the Lucifer, and that's the Casper. All in all, I would definitely recommend Tet Fest to another person. So now we're coming over to the end, and as soon as we ended, it was a really fun festival. Definitely 10 out of 10 recommend us leaving the festival. And then here's the opinions of my friend. So, wait, what's that? <laughs> this what? is embarrassing. Uh, we just finished day three of Tet Fest. What did you guys think? It was great. I'm really full. My stomach is full too. Yeah. I'm about to burst. Yeah, their food was really good. It really reminds me of some of the other stuff that we had at, um, what, like, Sacred City and stuff? Like yeah, 626. Yeah, 1960. No, 66. Tet Fest is an excellent opportunity for people to, who don't know much about Vietnamese Lunar New Year to learn more about it and celebrate it. Honestly, I didn't know about this festival until it popped up onto my Instagram. And then now I hope to make it an annual tradition for my family, friends, and I. Thank you guys for joining me in my first ever vlogging video. And I hope to see you guys soon.